Constructions, the word is derived more from um, constructivist, constructivist paintings. And that's the phase of painting uh, which happened in Russia way back in the 20s and 30s. It was a very fertile moment in art, architecture, fashion design, graphics. And uh, Zaha takes a lot of inspiration. Zaha takes a lot of inspiration from this work. Um, and her early work is inspired by constructivist works, especially those of Malavik. And because of my association with her, I mean, I developed uh, an interest in exploring further this phase of uh, art movement and her process of being able to translate an artwork into an architectural project, uh, very much during her earlier works, uh, especially her thesis project, which was called the Malavik Tectonic, and uh, some of her other early works, including the peak competition. I would take an art uh, painting or a diagram as and represent it on the site and further use it as a tool in order, to, uh, in order to segregate the various layers of circulation, of program, of landscape, of uh, site vistas, of site connections, and things like that. And then uh, what it helped make me do is that through this segregation of layers, it helped me make, uh, have clarity in this process of uh, architecture making. Uh, in short, what the exhibition is all about, it's all about a work process and there are no such paintings which are which we call as painting painting and not in a conventional way of painting it's more of a process it's more about exploration they're more about analytical studies of paintings they also show how uh, the process of working whereby the painting is used as a diagram in order to regulate and control the interior spaces to subdivide the spaces to program the spaces and uh, and then it further also goes into, after establishing the Red Studio at Paroda about a year back, I mean, I undertake several workshops and one of the workshops which is inspired by uh, my studies and uh, my ongoing research is that uh, workshop in art and architecture whereby we take an inspiration from a work of art and slowly start extruding it and converting it into a three-dimensional mass and volume study. And uh, so, uh, that, that, is, that is one phase where I am trying to get connections with my students and trying to inculcate them into the process those inter and trying to show them that there is an alternative process and a way of working whereby it will open up a whole lot of possibilities and new ways of uh, broadening the mind and seeing things differently and uh, adding value to the design process is what I would say is all about. So even when we start a work by taking a painting as an inspiration. It may be that it remains as a diagram to begin with, but at the end of it, you are left with hardly a trace of it, and it's not a literal translation which occurs on the site. Now, mostly they are constructivist experiences and exploration of constructivist paintings. And also, uh, because when I was there, in New York around in the around 89, 90, that was a time when the exhibition for deconstruction was first uh, exhibited at Museum of Modern Art, curated by Philip Johnson. And that is where it was very exciting time to see all these different architects are and Lipskind and uh, Morphosis and Eric Owen Moss and uh, all these people come together, Frank Gehry, all exhibiting on the same platform. All were trying different exploration, but what was common between all their work was that it was a new kind of work, a work which was never seen before. Very, what was common between them was there was a dynamic quality to the work and uh, which had never been seen before. So that is what uh, drew me to that. And then I started drawing parallels between some of the constructivist works and some of the works which uh, Lipskin and Bernard Chumin all were also exploring simultaneously. And, um, so if you see in this exhibit, it has a section which is devoted to some of the early explorations. Then it has a section which, uh, which has 
uh, my work interspersed with the work of the students which are done during the workshops at the Red Studio. There is a section where I'm trying to show where I have actually taken a painting as in a project, an actual project which has been built and uh, trying to study it in a sequential way in the form of layers. And lastly, last part of exhibition is relegated to some competitions, a few competitions that we did uh, in the last one and a half year noteworthy amongst them being the Guggenheim Reimagined competition which is for which we won the top prize uh, which was about reimagining the Guggenheim how it were would have been built by Frank Lloyd Wright had he been alive today uh, and the site is also his same where his building exists at the moment which is the iconic Guggenheim so taking clues from that with the spiral we tried to evolve our concept and we went down almost 300 meters deep into the ground and uh, we call it the Guggenheim Repository. It is all about saving works of art which are priceless for the future and all, this, all the more because we feel that the catastrophic events are happening more and more because of climate change and there needs to be a way where we can preserve the work and so going down seemed like a better alternative in that case. So that was one and the other one that we uh, we, are very, we are very passionate about when we were working is uh, trying to find a new way of reimagining the spire which has been lost for the Notre Dame Cathedral which got burned down in the, recently in a fire. And uh, there again we have tried to explore this notion of presence absence whereby the spire which is lost has been represented, the silhouette has been represented by a very pixelated kind of form which would eventually be covered with green over a period of time and making a new icon for the city of Paris. And most of these competitions have been done as teams with students and we all come together, brainstorm and uh, trash out these new ideas. So that is where our practice is more focused on right now, explorations, competitions, especially ideas, competitions, uh, writing and documentation. Uh, of these workshops that we do, uh, preparing modules for these workshops, preparing modules for thought processes of modernism and deconstruction, postmodern, because and uh, modules on uh, basic design and studio exercises. We uh, we focus more on that, and we even carry it to the different institutions as and when called for. I would say almost 80% of the exercises involved uh, which have been developed uh, at Navarajna between uh, Gurdev, myself and Sunita are more derived from constructivism in a way that we have an exercise which is called the planes and solids, a very Bauhaus kind of an approach one can say in that matter. The planes can be walls. And then the planes, if used vertically, can be walls, and a plane, if it used horizontally, can become a part roof, and then solids. So we call it planes and solids. The idea is to for students to get acquainted with some of the basic architectural elements, like a wall or a column and a volume, and try to negotiate a journey between them. There was another exercise which we call the wall, negotiating the wall, wherein there is a whole big wall right going through the site. And then one is allowed to make certain apertures in the wall to be able to go from one side to another and carve out their own journeys. So, uh, and these all are models are made at a human scale so that students learn this whole issue of perspective going through spaces, uh, visual connections, physical connections. And uh, so the aesthetic component of the composition and the physical manifestation all somehow go hand in hand, which is what we try to bring out with. In all of these projects, the students imagine journeys through space. Because after all, uh, and then you'll be surprised that some of these exercises are so fundamental that students have gone ahead and taken them uh, and worked further on them as their research topic during their uh, final culmination thesis too. Uh, yes, there have been students, I mean, uh, there have been students, it would be wrong to name them, but there are students in Ahmedabad and Surat and I'm some of them visiting me, Umang and, I mean, if you see their work in some way it is uh, getting inspired, I mean, I, 
I really appreciate the fact that what I was not able to achieve in terms of my buildings, my students are able to and carry forward the essence of it. I mean, the buildings are making, they're exploring new materials. Their vocabulary is coming out very strong. Uh, uh, they are, they are uh, what I was able to inculcate is an open mind uh, through which they would be able to absorb different things and they have been able to keep that open mind even during their practice. There is a desire to, uh, you know, get into that other realm and start doing uh, new things, not for the sake of doing new things, but with some meaning and uh, that too, sometimes I've observed that some of the students are even able to do it within very tightly controlled builder projects. So it's an achievement of sorts for them if we have been able to bring that about. Uh, the idea would be that I do not want them to think that this is just a passing fad. I want to make it communicable in the way that it's easy for them to understand and uh, to be able to understand that this is a process which will pay out rich dividends and also not to say that this is the process process but it is one of the ways of working and it could be taken for so with each exhibition to go back to your question there has been an attempt in achieving more clarity for myself to be able to explain uh, the way i work in a better way so that i can reach out to more and more people in order to be able to make some more sense and uh, in order to uh, give some sort of a validity to the whole process that uh, and how it can be beneficial in the making, uh, in opening up their minds, in shaping their minds, uh, you know, and in charting out their own uh, territories and paths in the future. So uh, my role is more of a facilitator to inspire, uh, to be able to help where needed in some institutions where, uh, you know, uh, this kind of projects and this kind of work through the workshops and all that we do, that's the next phase uh, which I'm trying to do since the last just one year, is that to make it more accessible, to show people that there are, there's a way of doing things like that. It breaks the rigidity of the studio uh, and it brings about a new uh, approach, I would say an approach. So it's worthwhile even if one doesn't want to explore it further on to know that there is something like that which is possible and there is an alternative way of thinking wherein uh, that is where I feel I would be able to make uh, a proper contribution in some way.